All right. Here we are. We got another episode of Baseline to Baseline uh, tonight. I got a really, really special guest uh, joining me tonight, one that I think y'all really going to like. Um, you know, some of y'all might know him, you know, as a viral sensation. Uh, some of y'all might know him as a bucket getter. Uh, to me, me personally, I know him as both. So, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead. And before we get started, I'm going to let bro introduce himself and, you know, tell the people who he is to all the people that's going to tune in. Um, first off, thanks for having me, my guy. Um, my name is uh, Jake West. Um, I go to I attend school at Penn Charter. I'm a junior and uh, I play uh, AU wow. basketball for the team final EYBL on the EYBL circuit. And, you know, uh, my presence is kind of known on social media, but I'm trying to show people that I can really do this hoop and stuff. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, Jake, my guy, man, appreciate you coming on. Um, we've been trying to work this out for like the last couple of days. So I just am very, very thankful of that from you. Um, just working with us, working with me and, you know, being patient and uh, being flexible. So, you know, to start off, you know, how how you feeling? You know, you at Penn Charter, uh, we almost like maybe a little under halfway through the season. So, uh, you know, just talk about how you feeling. Um. You know, Penn Charter has been a really cool um experience for me so far. Um, coach Brandon has been really good. Uh, he's a really good coach. He like he pushes me a lot in practice and he holds me accountable for my mistakes. So if uh if I'm not jogging back on defense or I'm not doing the things he knows I'm gonna do, like I can do, uh, he's gonna call me out on it. So he knows to keep me accountable and he like really pushes me a lot. So I like that about him. Also, I like uh I like the guys around me. So Kai, Jamal, Matt. Mm -hmm. uh, TJ, uh, they're a bunch of good guys. You know, uh, they want to see uh, each other win, so it's a good environment. Okay, okay. So, um, you know, you did you you touched on a few things, um, just in that that brief sentence that you just said. Uh, so you know, first I want to you know touch on you being at you know Penn Charter now. Uh, is is the move to Penn Charter? Uh, since we're like like I said halfway through. The season almost uh has the move been like you know what you expected so far um you know it's not the uh, start we wanted in the interact um we're one and two right now which we thought we weren't we were gonna go undefeated and win so uh it's not you know the season isn't gonna bring like the greatest things like you gotta be prepared for the worst things so losing two games at home is something we weren't prepared for so it's definitely been a little hard start to the season or for interact but I really liked our all season schedule. We got to compete against like top level uh competition against Combine Academy down in uh, Delaware and then we played against Link Academy up in New York. So we had a really good off season schedule. So that I think that really prepared us and we're just trying to get through hard stuff right now so that in the season we'll be good. Okay. Okay. So I'm glad you touched on um, you know, the the out of out of conference, you know, schedule and stuff like that because um I was there for for both of those those games that you you just mentioned, um, and you you seem to play pretty well. Um, I do want to ask you though, like you know, playing in a in a Jordan Holiday Classic, playing in Hoop Hall East, um, you guys you made all tournament team at Hoop Hall East, you know. By the way, um, so you know, just like playing on that national scale, what has it taught you so far about your team? Like maybe good and bad. Um, yeah, so I think the the one thing it's taught us is that um when we're underdogs, I feel like we, we play a lot harder. Um, you know, down in Delaware, I feel like people looked at us and they seen like a bunch of kids that were like six foot, not tall, and you look on the other side, they got a bunch of six, seven kids really built, like college level built. So it kinda it, we our our coach kinda brought us in, Coach Brandon said like we gotta just we gotta go out there and be a dog. We gotta be dogs on the floor. So I feel like being on the national schedule, like it helped us like kind of be like underdogs and want to win like really badly. So I feel like playing against the top level competition just brings the dog out of me and the team. Okay. Okay. And, and you did, you know, mention earlier to me, uh, you know, how you like playing with your, you know, your teammates, your new teammates. Um, so kind of, I want to ask you like, you know, what is it like playing with, uh, or what do you like most about playing with like guys like Matt and, um, uh, mm -hmm a big who can kind of do a little bit of everything. And then like a guy like Kai, who's like a, you know, a combo wing type of guy. He can, you know, run offense when you off the ball, you know, mm -hmm. you can be athletic and transition. So just talk about that. Like, what's that like yeah. playing those two guys? Um, so I haven't uh, really been 
uh, when I was at Carroll, um, like last year and two years ago, there wasn't really like a, a set big man. So coming here to Penn Charter, having someone like Matt who's really skilled at seven foot was was something that was really good because I thrive in a lot, like getting in the gaps, finding big man, finding shooters. So uh, having Matt just like to be able to just like kind of like lean on for like help is, is is really good because he he can finish around the basket, he can make a move, he can shoot. So he's he's really skilled. And then for Kai, I'm really good at getting in the gaps. Like like I said, finding shooters. So Kai Kai ready to knock down shots, but also he can get on the dribble, he can shoot. So he's those those two are really big pieces of our team. Okay. Okay. So um, you know, also, you know, one of the last things I want to touch on about that was uh, you know, the 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 off not off season, um other schedule games that you had that aren't like conference games. Um you guys did like you say, y'all played at um Hoopa East down in uh Delaware. And I, I did want to ask you like, you know, just going uh, to Cape Henlopen High School and, and going there for that game and you know, kind of like with your family and your family having kind of like a, a a background of being in that area. Um mm -hmm. Was there any like added pressure coming into that game, like, or did you kind of treat it like it was a, a regular kind of like game? Yeah, no, I know what you mean. Um, I feel like I kind of just took it as like kind of like a like a surreal moment because I I grew up uh, as a kid going down to Slam Dunk to the beach like watching people like Jonathan Kuminga or like Simeon Wilshire. So I just remember like doing that, and I just kind of put in perspective like, yo, like I'm really playing on this level. Like this is this is amazing. Like I kind of took it as an opportunity like. Yo, like I know how much hard work I put in. Like it's my time. It's like my turn to thrive on this kind of, kind of um platform. So, I mean, I would say I had like a little bit of butterflies, but it wasn't like a lot of pressure. I feel like I feel like I just went out there and just did my thing. So it was more so like just kind of like a full circle moment. Where... Yeah, definitely. Okay, okay. So yeah, Jake, I kind of also do want to touch on you know um your game has, you know, been taking substantial leaps. Um, and you've been, you've seen steady growth and improvement, um, especially, you know, from, you know, last season at this point to now, you know, I feel like you definitely got, I got a lot better. Um, I want to ask you, like, what do you, what could you attribute to, you know, your, your most recent success? Like, you know, what, what did that, you know, your summer grind look like? Yeah. So, um, I did. I got a lot of work in with my guy, um, Danny Cooper, um, one of the trainers. He's he's a really good trainer. And when I told him at the um the start of the summer, and I said, at Carroll, I felt like I was either just a catch and shoot, catch and shoot three, or get into the basket. I felt like I didn't really imply like the mid range in my game. So we worked a lot on mid range this whole summer, and I feel like th this season I've thrived a lot in mid range because I feel like my shot has gotten a lot better. Instead of like trying to go into the paint like against like taller people and getting like fouled and getting like beat up on my body, I'm starting to take the mid-range, you know? So I feel like the mid-range and just getting to my spots, I feel like it's been a big growth in my game. Okay, okay. And that's funny you said that too, because the I want to piggyback off that. The next question I have for you was, you know, like you mentioned earlier, I like how you kind of, like when you're on the ball, you get into the gaps, you kind of probe the defense a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. So like, I want to ask like, when you out there on the floor, like, what do you see as far as, like, how you read coverages and, like, you know, how do you pick and choose your spots and, like, all right, when to go, when to be aggressive and when to, like, all right, we need a good shot. Like, the last few possessions has been, like, sloppy. All right, and so now, yeah, like, definitely. so, like, you know, so, okay. yeah, I mean, I feel like I thrive. I thrive a lot in, like, the pick and roll game. So, um, when I'm coming off screens, um, I'm I'm always reading the big man, seeing what he's doing. So, um, down at Hoopal Classic, like like what what I like to do during the games is like the first play of the game I'll, I'll try to get a screen and see what they're doing so if I see like um oh they're blitzing it or um they're double they're double teaming I'll I'll keep that in the back of my head so I know what they're doing or they're going under or something so maybe the first time they go under I'll pat I'll pass back to Matt maybe the second time I'm coming I'm waiting then I'm pulling up so I just like to during the game I like to keep stuff in my head you know seeing what the defense does and stuff so maybe they're helping a little too much maybe next time I know I got the I got to kick the car. So I just like to keep stuff in my head. Yeah. Okay. So you take mental notes, you real like methodical with it, like seeing, testing how they, how they, you know, guarding different looks and stuff like that. Okay. I like that. So, so um, with that being said, like, what are, what are some players that you feel like you can say you model your, your game after? Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like 
it's not – my game is, like, very complete. Like, I don't want to sound, like, cocky, but I do, like, a lot – I do a lot other than just like I'm not just like a scorer, I'm not just a passer. Like I do I do a lot in my game. So I feel like there's not a lot of people I can compare it to, but I feel like one person I, I definitely compare it to is probably like C B three because he uh he he can score, he can he finds open teammates, he plays hard, and that's what that's why I really three things I do really well. I can see that. I can I can definitely kinda of see that. I don't know, I don't know if you ever heard this. Um this might be new to you and I don't know, you might not see it, but I kinda of see it. But I see kind of like a little bit of Halliburton. Um, Halliburton, I oh, look a little bit. I mean, I haven't watched him play a lot, but I heard I I watched one game and I heard he's nice and he looked really good when I watched him. I ain't gonna lie, bro. You gotta tap in, bro. Like I gotta tap in with him for sure. He made it good for sure. But I see a little bit of that. Maybe maybe you know you might. All right, maybe I gotta watch a little bit now. You, I yeah. feel like you might see what I see, but that's mm -hmm. just. I ain't trying to like you know. No, I'll take it. He's he's doing he's doing really good right now. So yeah, facts. Okay, so you know, um, my, my I do want to ask you too. Like you know, you said you worked on you know your mid range game, picking your spots a little bit differently this summer. But I also feel like yeah, athleticism took a leap too. Though, like, was that something that you really like took pride on as well? Like yo, like I really gotta you know get more explosive. Um yeah, so. A lot during the summer, I worked out with my guy Kenny Rez. Um, down, uh, he works out in Conchac, and he's got um, like a little garage outside that he works at. But it's really just like all work. Like when I go in there, I know I'm working hard. Like I know what I'm doing. He he pushes me a lot, which I really liked. So um, he did a lot of like ankle mobility stuff because my ankles have been really weak. So I feel like stuff that we did in there really helped my athleticism grow. Not even just mm -hmm. like dunking or anything, but just like getting into the lane, like. Floating yeah. on, on layups and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, them, them explosive movements are really, you know, key. You know, a lot of people, when they think of athleticism, they think just playing above the rim, but it's so much more than that. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay. So, uh, I want to ask you too, like, what, what would you say, like, you, you love the most about hooping? I love the most. Um, I just like, I really like competing and having fun. Like, um, like the games, like the hoop ball, the hoop ball East is like games I really thrive in, like an environment with a lot of people, you know, close games, like fighting, coming back, um, stuff like that. I just really like to compete and win, so I'll yeah. do anything to win, like just diving on the diving on the floor, or taking charges, just you know, picking my teammates up. So I just want to do anything to win and compete. Okay, okay. So, so what if I asked you to give me one word to describe your game? What what, what would that word be? Um, probably probably competitor. I like like I said, I like to compete. Like I, I play really hard. Like I'm 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 diving on the floor, I'm talking to my teammates, uh, I'm shooting I'm shooting shots when I need to. I I'm just really I'm a competitor. Competitor, okay. That's a great word. It's a great word. Okay. So, you know, that was that kind of wraps up the first segment. Um, you know, the second segment I do did want to tap in with just a little bit of your recruitment. I don't really want to talk too much about it, but yeah. Just a little bit about your recruitment. So, you know, like, um, I saw that you, you know, you have a pretty good slate of schools, you know, like I've seen Drexel, um, you know, Lafayette, Fairfield, uh, Mississippi State, schools like that. Um, I want to I want to ask you, like, first, you know, what what is Jake looking for in a school? Like what what type of program do you see yourself, you know, fitting in? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, You know, I. A school I would want to go to is like like a school that has like really good culture. Like the people, like the kids around there, they all they're all built into the program. They all they all love each other. There's not there's not no friction. Like everybody's built in and everybody wants to do everything to win because ultimately I want to surround myself with people that are just like me. Like I don't want to surround people that are like lazy or um don't want to compete, like only care about how much they score or what their what their like what their role is. So I feel like I just wanna a school who people compete and they want to do anything to win. Okay. Okay. So, you know, with that said, you know, uh, do you have a dream school? Um, yeah, my dream school is uh, UCLA just cause I like the, I like the uh, area, like California playing basketball. Um, the campus is sick. I went down there when I was younger and I, I, I viewed it and it was really cool. So UCLA growing up has always been my dream school. Okay. So UCLA, when y'all tune in, you're watching. Keep noting, Big West, come get them. Um, <laughs> other than that, you know, okay, so 
you know, I, I mentioned some schools that, you know, were listed as far as, you know, sending some offers and showing some interest. Um, yeah. You know, could you update us maybe on a few schools that maybe have been reaching out, showing some interest as far as, you know, recently throughout this new season? Um, yeah, for sure. Um, I just, I've been talking to Richmond a lot in the A-10. Richmond is a really good school. I think they're 4-0 in the A-10 right now, so they're doing really good. Um, the coach has been checking in with me, you know, letting me know how they're doing. Um, Davidson also has been hitting me up a lot, which Steph Curry went there, so that's a big school. Um, you know, a couple of Ivy League schools like Yale, Penn, they'll check in daily. Um, Lafayette, always been cool to me. Uh, William Mary, LaSalle, so... Yeah, a bunch of a bunch of schools, and I'm really grateful for every school that's reached out. You know, the the transfer portal has kind of made it hard for people to get recruited. So I'm just kind of, I'm grateful for any opportunity I get. Okay, okay, it's a good answer. So, um, you know, as far as that process, do you think like going into your senior year, you'll want to already kind of know as far as all right where I'm going, or do you think like you're going to take as long as you possibly you know can to really do your due diligence and, and really, you know, take your time with it? Um, I mean, ideally, I, I want to be committed by the end of, uh, like, Peach Jam, probably by, like, the end of summer, just because I feel like from, like, my past experience, like, with my friends, like, my boys, they say it just it just takes, like, a lot of pressure off your off your shoulders going into your senior year. It's like, yo, you know you know where you're going. Your senior year, you just play, free, play freely. You don't really care about, like, who's watching or nothing. I mean, obviously, you still play hard, but it just kind of gives you, like, that that weight off your shoulders that you know you're going to be good at the next level. Right, right. Okay, I agree. I think that's a some good insight. Okay, so, you know, uh, we're going to end, you know, the recruitment segment right there. Um, mm -hmm. I want to touch on, uh, you know, your summer experiences, though, a little bit. Um, you know, like you said, you were playing um, EYBL with, uh, you know, with Team Final. Um mm -hmm. And I want to ask, like, you know, as far as this past summer, how do you feel like, you know, your last summer went and what were some of your biggest takeaways? Um, I think overall last summer was really good for me. Um, you know, going out uh fifteen U summer, I w I didn't I wasn't a starter for team final fifteen U. Um, I was kinda on the bench. I mean, I still did good. I mean, probably only averaged like six points, a couple assists. But this uh, last year, uh, Coach Ross had a lot of confidence in me, and he um, helped me to basically uh, burst out kind of this summer to show people that I'm really like I'm really good at basketball. And I was just, you know, hooping out there with a lot of confidence. Um, went down to UIBL sessions, killing people. Um, went up against the top competition like Cooper Flag, a um, bunch of other UIBL teams. So it was just a lot of fun just to go out there and show people like I can hoop at the highest level, and I did really well. Okay. Okay. So, um, you know, you also had a lot of, a lot of fun this summer too. Like, you know, you were big on the, you know, raw wave elite, um, mm -hmm. wave this summer. I do want to ask you about that. Like, you know, like, what is that like, you know, like the raw wave elite wave and the, and the Cam Wilder stuff, like how yeah. was the experience for you? Um, it was, it was crazy. It was nothing, it was nothing like I've ever experienced in my life. Um, it was just like, crazy just to see how many kids came out there just to just to watch us play and a couple of times like I just like taking in like how much like people was here and it was just crazy like just to I was just grateful for Cam for giving me the opportunity just to play on a platform like that and kind of showcase to like the younger age group and other people that I really played basketball too. Okay okay did you uh attend any camps this summer? Um this summer uh, this summer, I don't think I, I don't think so because I was supposed to go to hoop group, but I think during most of the summer it was UIBO, and then end of summer there was a bunch of camps, but I got hurt at the end of the summer. I twisted my ankle and broke it, so check I was rock. out. Yeah, check rock game. I, I, I went up for like a block, came down, and twisted my ankle, so I was out for from August to like mid September, so I was mostly out. Okay, so um, um, I do want to ask you as as well, like you know, you also uh big on overtime, you know, uh, you have a great relationship with them. It seems like you know you you always got the the overtime merch that you feel me you can't find nowhere else. Um, yeah. I, you had you had like a series on overtime as well, right? Mm -hmm, so, yeah. 
talk about that a little bit like how did that relationship come about and you know what was that experience like for you because that's not your day-to-day -day, everyday things like you know definitely um so over time kind of reached out to me during the summer um about you know coming down there and just like uh playing at overtime elite because um you know a lot of high level basketball players play there and especially a lot of people with higher social media presence too so they thought I was going to fit perfectly there um then I kind of built a relationship with the people there like Tom who's always been really good to me uh Max so they're really good guys and um you know just they just came to watch me play they've always shown me love um like on the basketball side and social media side so um around August they hit me up to see if I wanted to do like a day in the life type of thing so I mean getting that getting that text from overtime for a day in the life was like kind of crazy because as a kid you know watching like Mikey Williams and stuff like that and then now you get I'm getting my own it was it was kind of crazy like a surreal moment so sometimes I like just sit back and like kind of like realize like maybe when I get like a lot of hate or something and I just realized like how far like I've come and seen like I have overtime documentary so it was really cool Oh, for sure. So, like, was that, like, kind of weird for you, though? Like, having, like, a camera crew, like, following you around and stuff, like, while you just trying to do your regular, you know, day-to-day -day yeah. thing? Like, is that kind of yeah. was off a little bit? I mean, yeah, definitely. Like, it was definitely, like, a little bit weird. But the, the guy who did it, my guy, Tay, shout out Tay, he was, he was really cool. You know, he was a really genuine person. Uh, he wasn't really, he wasn't really in it for, like, the camera either. He's, he built a really good relationship with me, you know, uh, off camera, so. He was a really cool guy, but yeah, I mean, having a camera follow you around the whole time is is it was uh, it was good, but it was also like a little bit like a little crazy. But I, I enjoyed it because it came out. I feel like the overtime documentary came out really well. Okay, okay, that's great, Jake. So you know, I do obviously. I gotta ask you, like the the TikTok stardom. I pr I'm pretty sure you probably talk about this all the time. Um, people ask you this all the time, but um you know you mentioned it like you know you you wanted to prove to people that you're more than just uh you know a, a tiktok you know person um mm -hmm. a lot of people don't might not know you for basketball which is kind of like crazy to me so mm -hmm. you know, what what was that like you know just does that for one give you like a chip on your shoulder like when you're playing or like does it not affect you at all um definitely it definitely like keeps a chip on my shoulder because I know um every time I'm out there I'm trying to prove not just to people but to myself that like I'm I'm one of the top players in the country and I always know whoever I'm playing against is always gonna try their hardest against me and play their hardest because they want to show people that they're better than me or that I'm not as good as people think. So it's always a chip on my shoulder because I try to prove try to prove like a lot of people wrong and show people that I'm really that good. Okay. Okay. So, you know, with, with your stardom and, um, you know, your, your viral moments, uh, on TikTok, like, is that something that was planned? Like, did you see this? Like, all right, like, I ain't gonna lie. Like, I kind of want to be lit on this genre or like, was you just kind of like, yo, I'm gonna just make some dance videos for fun. And then if it goes somewhere, it goes somewhere. Like, yeah. So, um, me and my boys, me and my boys were just messing around to school one day. Uh, I tell the story like all the time, but we were just messing around like the library and we seen some TikTok video and my boy was, I didn't even I didn't even know about it. My boy was just like, yo, you trying to hop in? I was like, yeah, whatever. He just put the camera in my face and I just started doing something. I didn't even know what I was doing, like for real, for real. But uh then so like a week later, like nothing happened. And then a week later it just we start seeing like all these likes and we're like, wow, like what? And everybody's like talking about me. And then my boy's like, yo, we got we gotta make another one. I'm like, all right. And then we made another one even more likes and he's like yo we got to keep going so for like two weeks straight we just kept making a bunch of videos and they weren't even on my account at first so my boy got really famous and I, I was like all right I might, might as well do this on my account because everybody's talking about me so <laughs> I went and did it on my account and you know people just followed and it was all kind of just quick but I'm really like happy how it turned out and stuff yeah so like now that you that you at you know where you at with it you know what I'm saying you hit a, a m followers on there like are you just like cool with it now or is it like all right well I want to take it to that next level now like you know F it we gonna go to the moon with it yeah um definitely uh it's definitely surreal to see like one million followers people following you so um it's definitely like a moment that I really like it's like really I really accomplished this but 
I definitely want to keep going, but one million is just like a great accomplishment. So I have to like take that in sometimes. Okay. So and I do want to ask you, like, you know what I'm saying? Cause when I see you, you feel me, you hand you hand the dances, you got a lot of rhythm, like, you know what I'm saying? So like I don't know if that's what be catching people off guard or what it is, but like I wanna ask like where does like the the background for that come from as far as like how well you could dance? Like was you always like that? Like or where did that come from? Yeah. I mean, my mom said like I always just dance as like a kid, but I never really like took it like serious or nothing. So it always like was really like a joke. But um I mean we just saw like like I said, me and my boy just saw this one dance and I just tried it and I guess I was really good at it. So I just I just kept doing it. And then, you know, I saw like a, a point where I'm like, yo, maybe maybe I can keep doing this. So I kept doing it and I'm here now. So facts. Facts. So okay. I, I also do want to ask you, um, you know, I, I know you're you're big into to fashion. Um mm-hmm. uh and do you so do you have a brand or are you just an ambassador? Um, I do. I, I I do have my own brand. I haven't really been doing much with it. I haven't really active. It's hard uh, to like keep like a brand, do basketball, social social media, school, and all that. So I've kind of stepped away from it a little bit. But my brand is really is called Just Be Yourself, and I just try to like promote like the image of like not trying to be somebody else or not trying to fit in with something. Just just be you, because I feel like ultimately I've done that my whole life, and that's what's got me here. Like not trying to be somebody else, not caring what people think, and you know just being myself and doing what I like to do. Right. Okay. So, so kind of, let me ask you this, like, is, is fashion your, or at least your sense of fashion, is it kind of a way for you to like, you know, express yourself or, you know, is it just like, all right, I'm, I'm aware what I like, or is it kind of like a mixture of everything, like a mixture of both? Yeah. I mean, I feel like anybody can speak for this, but if you have like a cool outfit on, I feel like you feel confident, like walking places and walking anywhere. So I feel like that goes for me. Like, if I'm wearing like a new like spider hoodie or something that I, I feel I feel better about walking into somewhere and you know not even just like a spider hoodie but if I like the way something looks like I feel like I'm gonna look I'm gonna look better and feel more confident okay so like what's your what's your off court what's your off court drip look like 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 you feel me like when you not playing like are you always trying to get trim or like you feel me or are you just on some chill like what that look yeah. like? I mean, uh, like at the house, I just be wearing like some pajamas and stuff. But um, when I go out, I like to I like to wear like a lot of stuff, like maybe like Chrome Hearts, uh, denim tears, spider stuff like that. But I really, I really just do it because I like I just like I like to dress so, and I think it looks cool. So okay, tight, tight. So I also, you know, you mentioned it earlier, like how it kind of can be difficult juggling all the things that you're into. I did want to ask you, like, how do you maintain a balance with everything as far as, like, everything you're into, school, hoops, fashion, uh, you know, TikTok, social, all that stuff? Like, how do you, family, how do you maintain a balance? Definitely. I mean, so school and, like, school comes first. So during the day, like, I just get all my schoolwork done in class, um, listen, like, pay attention. And then after school practice, and then, like, sometimes after practice, when I'm not, like, too tired, go get some shots up, work out. And then when I come home, like, um, I just, like, maybe lock in on some more schoolwork. But social media, TikTok, what, what was helpful for me is dancing was, like, easy. It's just quick. So, like, I, I go I go downstairs or go to my room or something, make, like, a like a 30-second TikTok, post it, and then yeah. whatever. So that what helpful was that is it's quick. I don't got to spend hours doing that. It just takes, like, a minute. And then I'm I'm off with doing other stuff. So I mean it's definitely hard at times, but you know I I I, I do it I do it pretty well I think. Okay okay quick quick little blick video and then you done you feel me? And I'm done. You feel me? <laughs> okay so like I also want to ask you like I feel like you know the 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 hoop mixtapes that you have also kind of like played a part in um you know your emergence because like I ain't gonna lie Jake. I don't know if it's you, bro, that be coming up with like the 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 soundtrack for him, or if it's like you feel me, the videographer. Like I know T Pac be did a couple of your drawings that was like fire. So you know, yeah. shout out T Pac, that's my guy. I'll but, keep it. You feel me? Like, what is that? Like, does that 
did that kind of help you and take your platform to the next level? Like just having like the the, the fire who mixtapes as well. Like, yeah, that, I mean, shout out my boy TPA. He he's the one that finds all the sounds. Like he'll he'll send me him. And I'll be like, yeah, yeah, that's that's tough, bro. But he what TPA did. He he always like picked stuff that was like fun and like upbeat and like trending. So he was smart with it. Like he would pick something that like really like gives out like my personality. Like so like if I'm like because like on the court I like to have like a lot of fun and off the court I like to have fun too. So. I'm like always like doing something like funny. So T Pack would always put like funny clips in there and like it would like match up with the song. So he was like, he's really good at what he does and it kind of like helped me blow up to show like my personal life, like my kind of like my personality and then basketball all in one. So shout out T Pack, bro. I like, I definitely like how, how that blend, how that blends together. And now that I know that you feel me, y'all work together on that. It's just, I could definitely see it. Like, but Pac, yeah. We be spazzing, bro. I don't know what it is. We be going hard. Um, He's nice. So, you know, okay. So I do want to ask you, like, since you're involved in so many different things, um, I you might not have thought this far yet, but you know, you you are big into to to media and you're big into fashion. Um, so have you thought about, you know, anything plans after basketball, like what that might look for you? What that might look like for you? Yeah. Um I haven't really thought uh, much about it yet, but I know that like I have a really big audience and following and I feel like I'm really creative with stuff like with my brand and like my personality, I think people like a lot. So I feel like it's not a lot of worry like after basketball that I'm not going to be able to like keep my platform. I feel like my personality and like the people that support me, I feel like I can keep that going. So definitely like maybe like YouTube or something, I feel like I could do maybe after basketball, like stuff that like Cam and them do like, basketball content social media content so yeah okay okay so um I do want, also want to ask you Jake you know just talking to you sitting down interacting with you here and then you know just talking to everybody that you know mutuals and, and some of your peers um everybody kind of has the same thing to say about you man like real down to earth real humble um real chill laid back so I want to ask you like what you know what kind of really keeps you humble and, and keeps you grounded um like definitely something that's humble is like i i didn't like in like freshman year um when i went to freshman year my first freshman year i went to plymouth white marsh so i wasn't really like that big in like the hoop scene and i wasn't really like doing much so and i was only like five maybe like five four five five my freshman year so i was really short and it was, i wasn't a good i wasn't like a bad player or nothing but it's kind of just like seeing my growth and knowing like how I came from here to there. It's kind of like it humbles me because it shows me that like I I came really far and stuff. Okay, okay. and I I do want to ask you. That's crazy. You mentioned the school aspect as well, because like I want to ask you like, is a day to day life at school like is it annoying? Like you know what I mean. Going to Penn Charter, like I don't want to say annoying, but you know what I mean. Like. Yeah be regular like people always probably coming up to you asking you stuff or jake can you do a dance for me like i know that you probably get all types of stuff so like you know what is, what is that kind of like for you bro like the day-to-day -day life of you know being in school and, and being in high school but having like popularity yeah definitely i mean at first like it was i, I was really like second guessing myself when i first like transferred to penchar just because of like how like like how the name i have and like going into a new school like what are the people going to think of me and stuff? So it was definitely hard at first. And just because I'm really like, I'm kind of like shy, like in person when I first meet people. So it was definitely really hard. <clears throat> but as I got like used to people and stuff, it got better. But at first, yeah, it was definitely like a lot of people like, yo, like just like looking at me, like laughing or something like that. But honestly, like, like I said, like with my brand, like just be yourself. I I just was just acting like myself and where I, wherever I go, I just try to, just be myself and not really worry about what other people say about me because I know how good of a person I am and stuff. Okay. Okay. So um I do, you know, this this last segment that I did wanna ask you, you know, it's I kinda wanted to get to, you know, your background story a little bit though, Jake. Like your your origin story a little bit, like, you know, like as far as a hooper, who who really, you know, put that battery in your back and really influenced you influenced you to you know pick up a ball um definitely my dad my dad has been a big part of my basketball journey he coached me ever since I was little all the way up to eighth grade so 
you know, my dad instilled like great values in me, like being a great teammate, being a leader, um, playing like playing tough competition since I was little. So my dad's really prepared me for like all the moments that I have right now. And like without him, I don't feel like I would be like the person I am today or the basketball player. Okay. Okay. And and what would you say, you know, where did you it was basketball something that you fell in love with like off rip? Or is it like, you know, gradual, you know, progress? Um, I, at first, when I was little, I was really into baseball. So, um, but cause, just because, I don't know, I really like the Phillies and stuff. But as I got older, baseball got slower. And I just realized, like, basketball was really fast-paced and fun. And I'm, I was, like, really fast. So <clears throat> I just stuck with basketball because I, I fell in love with it. After baseball started to get slower, basketball started to get faster. And it was just – I was just really talented at it at a young age. Okay. Okay. And and would you say what around what age would you say you started to figure out that all right, I'm I'm kind of different at this and mm -hmm. like I take it serious. Like what what would you start to realize that? I mean, I feel like when you're younger, you're just kind of out there just playing like so I feel like I was really good when I was younger, but I felt like kind of like that 7th 7th grade kind of I think I felt like I was different because I was um I played for We Are One when I was in seventh grade and I was going into gyms with like a bunch of people that like I never met and stuff and like playing really hard. And I just realized like I was different, like I was doing stuff people weren't doing, you know, making like Euro steps and stuff. So like dribbling the ball, having a good handle. So I felt like seventh grade, I really saw like that I can really like I'm really different and I should have confidence in myself. Okay. okay. And would you say... Um... <laughs> What about your first grassroots experiences? Like, what about that? Like, starting out when you first started, you know, obviously, you know, we see the growth to where you are now. But, you know, what was the experiences like? Yeah, definitely. So, my, my first year playing EYBO was definitely, like, like a smack in the face. Like, just seeing, like, going from playing, like, my neighborhood and going to playing against kids that are, like, 6'8", and as, like, 15. So, you know, just seeing that was, like, crazy. But now, like, as I'm older, like, I just realized I can compete with them now. Like, seeing my growth from 15 to 17, like, it's crazy. And I've just – it's a big growth. Okay. So, you know, you, you've seen the growth over time. Uh, this being, you know, you going into your last – your last go-round for, real, like, your last summer. Uh, this has been a long journey. Uh, what do you, you know, want to get out of your last go-round? You know, playing grassroots. Yeah, so my my last two years, 15 and 16 years, we haven't we haven't qualified for Peace Jam. So definitely first goal, qualify for Peace Jam, you know, get there uh, because it's the highest level, I think, competition in the country. So, you know, playing against those guys, uh, getting in front of college coaches, showing showing that you can really play basketball um, is just really big for me. But I really want to go, like, very, like, win the Peace Jam championship. That would be amazing, you know, because I feel like that's just a surreal feeling for – any high school kid and that's like a dream okay okay so um you know we mentioned it earlier you know how you're a really high iq player um and kind of the player who you are but i want to ask you like uh was your iq for the game obviously it wasn't always this high you you acquired that over time but you know what were your early stages where you were you Noticing that you were, you know, smarter than a lot of players that you were playing against when you first yeah. started. And um, oh. so I want to ask, how do you maintain it? Like, are you a big guy on, like, film? Or, like, you know what I mean? I want to pick your brain a little bit with that. Um. Yeah, definitely. Um. Like I said before, my dad, like, instilled a lot, like, of values that I have today. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, like, like I said, being a leader, um, you know, making the right play always. So as I like as a kid, you know, hearing my dad always say that, I always did that when I was younger. And I feel like my IQ really just comes from like my dad teaching me stuff when I was younger. So like I'm really appreciative of him and what he did for me when I was younger. And now, I mean, I, I watch I definitely watch a lot of, like a lot of film, but one thing I, I do is like I, I like to watch like other people's games too. Like I like to watch like a lot of like high school games, like maybe on like YouTube or college games, you know, picking up stuff from from certain players like watching like point guards on high level college teams and seeing like how they stay on the floor and how like how they play they play the, the game the right way. Okay. Okay. That's good. So um you know I also wanted to ask you like how you mentioned earlier 
uh that you know when you first started you you weren't always kind of like in the mix you know as far as like with the with the right people or with the playing against like the top or the top um and i did i did see your um your interview with my guy jado um not too long ago and uh you know you kind of mentioned oh, a little bit in that like you know kind of how you your origin and how you came up and then going to philly and you know playing in the trenches with those guys Um, really made you better, but I want to ask you, uh, what is it, what is it exactly about, you know, being in Philly in that environment that makes it special? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Philly basketball is just like really rough and tough and a lot of people can't make it in Philly basketball because people are soft or they don't want to do like hard things. So I was told as a young age, like going through, like playing, like, like you said, like in the trenches against tough people like it just showed me like that you you can't be soft and you have you have to be there right mentally so going against people like getting the ball taken from me getting bumped by people when I was younger really like prepared me for when I'm older like I, I handle pressure really well like I don't know if you like see in my game that I don't really get sped up or nothing I don't I don't really turn the ball over stupidly it's just because I feel like as a young age like I went through all that stuff of like playing really hard so it kind of built me for moments in the big stage Okay. Okay. Jake. And, you know, I also did want to ask you, like, uh, you got, you got a little brother that that's coming up hooping too, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So, you know, what, what is it like, like, you know, being older, having a little brother? Cause my family, I'm the youngest, both of my older brothers who, so like, you know, what is it kind of like you being the, the big brother and, and you having a crazy influence over him? And what are some things like, you know, that you like about that? And what are some things like you know that you might see in him, you know, early on that kind of maybe you help instill? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel like it's good to see like for my brother to see like my progression over the years. Um, my brother, he's not he's not the tallest player out there right now, but he's kind of he kind of reminds me of me when I was younger. You know, he makes like a lot of flashy plays, he makes the right play, he can make like a tough bucket, but he's just he's not like physically as big as the other kids, but Like I said, like going against people that are really physical and strong and like bigger than you is, is going to prepare you for, for bigger moments when you're older. So I feel like my brother just, I always tell him to like, like just trust, like trust his path. Like, because I, when I was younger, I always thought like, yo, I'm never going to grow. I'm, I'm, I'm weak. I'm never going to get stronger. I'm never, I'm not gonna be ever going to be played at like the high level. But now like I see me and I'm like, wow, I never thought I would be here. So it's kind of good to see for him to see my path. And for, I always tell him just, Trust your path, keep working, and the right things are going to fall for him. Okay, okay, Jake. That's a great answer. So, um, you know, that that kind of concludes my interview. You know, that's kind of how the last question I really wanted to ask you. Uh, I did mention to you earlier that, you know, we're going to get into, to conclude it, a quick little rapid fire Q&A, you know, just about Jake, just to see where your head at, you know, mm -hmm. with a few things. Um. So the the first one I want to start with, uh, and I kind of I feel like I kind of already know, uh, at least two of these that you might say just because you feel me I'm professional I do my homework going into things like this but I did want to ask you you know like your top music artist obviously it's one that's going to be on there it's probably yeah. two that I know that's going to be on there but I'll let you tell it but give me your you know your top music artist. Um, I really only listen to a couple of artists. Um, okay. number one, I listen to Lil Uzi. Lil Uzi yeah. definitely yeah. my top artist. Um, I listen to, um, like Lil Baby, mm -hmm. uh, um, Rod Wave. Mm -hmm. Uh, I listen to some like underground, like Summers, Destroy Lonely, Ken Carson. Okay, uh, I'm good to Ken. Playboy Cardi. So yeah, those are most of the people. Okay. Okay. I like NBA, NBA Youngboy too. I forgot NBA Youngboy. That's my guy too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So like, is that are those artists consistent as far as like you listening to them pregame and you listening to them where you just like cooling or like, is it a little difference? Like when you just cooling, like are you more like laid back or, like, yeah. um, yeah. yeah uh, I feel like it. It depends. Like some some music, some cool music, like calms me down before the game. So. It depends on how I'm feeling. Like, if it's a big game, maybe I'll listen to, like, some cool music, just some, like, to calm me down, just to be, like, 
yo, like, relax. Like, there's no butterflies. Like, just chill. So some chill stuff. But other games, maybe I need to get pumped up. I'll listen to, you know, like you said, like, some pumped up artists. Like, maybe, like, Lil Baby, NBA Youngboy. But if I want to, like, calm, cool, like, Uzi or uh, Rod Wave or something like that. Okay. Okay. What about uh pregame? You got any pregame meals, like, that you like to have before the game? Um, a pregame meal, I feel like it's, like, always cool. It's just, like, like a hoagie from, like, Wawa or something. Oh, just because I, I feel like, yeah, like, because I don't want to eat too much before the game because I don't want my stomach to hurt. Yeah. And I don't want to eat, like, not enough because I'm not going to have energy. So I feel like my go-to is is a turkey turkey hoagie and a strawberry smoothie from Wawa. Hey, that's a good order. Good combos. Me for real. <laughs> okay, so, like, damn, how, you, how do you play – on a hoagie though, like what you eat that on, like maybe two, three hours before the game. Like you're not like an hour before the game. Type. No, like, like an hour. <laughs> an sometimes, hour. So, bro, AAU sometimes I I mean that like ten, like fifteen I mean, minutes. Before yeah, the game. I get that. That's AAU though. That's different. Like sometimes. No, high school. Yeah, high school. Like like an hour and a half, maybe two hours before the game. Okay. okay. Yeah. I say you want to eat a whole hoagie, like yeah, <laughs> bro. That was not me. I ain't gonna hold you. Um, okay, so what about that's your pregame meal? So what about you know pregame routine? Like, do you have a routine that you like to go through? Either whether that's AAU and, and high school, like you know, you got a, a routine. Um, yeah, definitely like listen to music, like you said, um, is a big part of my routine. Um stretching, I'm not I'm not the most flexible, but I know I have to stretch before games. So, you know, um listening to music, stretching, kind of just like I like to I like to this is something a lot of people don't know, but I like to like go in the bathroom before a game, like, look in the mirror, like, tell myself positive things, like, because I feel like it's all, like, about how you talk to, talk to yourself. You can't, you don't want to go into a game negative, like, overthinking sure. stuff. So, I, I usually, uh, one of my guys, uh, Charles, told me a really good thing, uh, just to give three positive things about yourself and say it, like, three times. So, I feel like before games, I do that, and I, I feel like it, it, it it's, it's worked really well for me. That's tough. I never, I never tried that. I never even heard of that. That probably gives you, like, so much added confidence going into it yeah, it helps a lot i appreciate charles for showing me that yeah i wish somebody would have showed me that that's kind of tough i ain't gonna hold you uh, um okay so what about uh your favorite hoop sneak all the time hoop sneak i like Kyrie's. Kyrie's are my favorite Kyrie's and kobe's um Kyrie's, I, i've worn them like ever since i was younger so and i feel like they've been they've been pretty good to me i i'm not i'm not really a I wasn't really a big fan of Kobe's when I was younger just because, like, how low they were and, like, how my ankles were bad. But I've been taping my ankles lately, and I, I really – I like Kobe's. Yeah, okay. I was about to say, I feel like the last time I seen you, you probably had slam dunk. You yeah. had Kobe's on. I think yeah, I think I, I think I had to go with Kobe's, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So um, give me a favorite uh basketball movie. Favorite basketball movie? Uh, Blue Chips. Blue chips, that's a good one. I think oh. you're the first one to say that. I feel really? like I asked that. That's a good one. I like one. that movie, yeah. Yo, I rock with you, Jay. I rock with you. Who well, okay, so you in a fashion, so you know, who in the league would you say got the best drip? Uh probably Shea. Shea? Yeah. He be, he got his own lane, like for nobody really dresses like that. And like I said, like he just he just doing his own thing. So it looks and he's doesn't really care what nobody thinks about it. He's just doing his own thing. Yeah. And I heard he's stepping every game. Like, it don't matter. Like, he going to yeah. throw it on. Like, every game he got it on. Like, that's crazy to me because that takes too much energy. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Um, all right. So, what about, uh, you know, who's your NBA GOAT? NBA GOAT? Um, I don't know. I, I I say Michael Jordan just because I, I really like, like I said, I like take, like being like a dog and stuff. And I just feel like. No shade to LeBron, but I just don't feel like he he's more of a dog than Le, than uh Michael Jordan. I feel like he like flopping and stuff. Like, I don't I don't I don't like that. I feel like you almost kind of had to think about that though. Like you <laughs> you ain't want to say that, but you wanted to keep it a bean. So like you said that. <laughs> no, nah, I mean I don't know. It's it's a tough question just because I never grew up watching Michael Jordan. Like I grew up watching LeBron, so it's hard to say LeBron's not the goat. But I just feel like just. Some stuff that LeBron does is just questionable. No, facts. I, that's understandable. I ain't grow up watching watching Mike neither, so I ain't that old. Yeah. I grew up on Kobe and Brown, so it's it's hard for me to say the same thing. Um. Okay. So, uh, what about give me if you had to make a, a all high school starting five right now, 
a, t- a players right now. Who who's in your five? But you can't put yourself though. You said I can't put myself. I um I probably go at the one I go Rob Rob right from my bird um smart man yeah Rob at the one probably Jaleel Jaleel at the two okay yeah final duo one and two um at the three I I probably I probably put Coop at the three or no 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 AJ AJ at the three AJ at the three AJ put Coop Coop at the four and then it's an important one right here. I'm trying, yeah, I'm trying to think of, of cause I, I would put Boozer, but I feel like Boozer not really like a five. I don't know. I feel that. I feel that. Uh but the what about uh I'll give it to my boy Peyton. Peyton from OT. Yeah. Okay. Peyton, Peyton, Peyton will hold it down in the in the paint. <laughs> uh, he would though. He definitely he would. Would. Okay, so what about that's your all five high school guys? Give me, give me your top three favorite um people on TikTok right now. On TikTok, um, definitely my boy Jared, Jared McCain, mm-hmm. uh, Jared. And it don't uh, be hoopers; it can be whoever. Yeah. And then probably um, let me think, Jared. Uh, my boys at like the Philly Goats, like Spence, Spence and Dice. So probably probably Philly Goats and, and Jared. Because the Philly Goats, they always, always got the best sounds. They always got really good energy. So I mess with it. For sure. They stay been too. I stay seeing them in a while while somewhere. <laughs> yeah, they, they always got a lot of energy. So it, it always be making me laugh and stuff. Okay. Okay. So, okay, you doing them. And then you had you had one more? Um. Well, I mean, I just said, like, kind of like. Oh, okay. The Philly Ghost is like a group, so I kind of. Okay, okay, okay. I got you. I got you. So if you had to, if you had to pick one person to, to do a TikTok with, like somebody that you wanted to be in your joint, like who would you pick? I probably say Uzi. Uzi, that's yeah. hard. <laughs> I mean, I was I was supposed to be I was supposed to be in the music video, and then he texted me, "Yo, you want to be in the music video?" I was like, "Yeah," and then he never he never flanked texted you, me. Right? You said what? He flanked on you, right? Yeah, he flanked he flanked on me. So. It's that, it's that famous stuff, bro. Come Thank on, bro. <laughs> you got to do better, Uzi. Come on, Uzi. But, all right, so my last question I got for you, Jake. Um, If you had to pick, you know, one <laughs> one friend or, like, one teammate to, to you know, hop on here and do an interview, um, who would you recommend? Um, One friend or teammate. Uh... Probably say my boy Matt, Matt Gill. Matt Gill. Yo, I did a I did a, like a post game interview with Matt. I yeah. went over the summer at uh dang, where was we at? Up in Albany at uh Gym Rats. Gym Rats. Gym Rats up in Albany. And Matt, Matt seemed like so shy. Really? And, oh yeah, Matt, Matt is a little shy, but once you get to know him, his personality, he he has a good personality. He's just a little shy around people, just like me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I kind of definitely got that vibe though a little bit. Like as as the interview progressed, he seemed like okay, like he was opening up a little bit. Yeah. That Matt does that definitely. Okay. That's that's normal though. I ain't I ain't mad at Matt. Okay. So we are gonna holler at Matt, Jake. I need you to throw the lob on that. You feel me? Matt on here. I definitely kind of want to get Matt on here anyway. So yeah, we gonna we gonna make that happen, Jake. I need you to throw the lob. That's so, me, Matt. Dunk that drum. <laughs> on here but nah i appreciate you jake man that's that concludes my interview that's all i got for you tonight it's getting late so i'm gonna you know let you get some rest do your thing um appreciate you again jake west for everybody that's tuning in man that's going watch um i don't even know like (laughs) how to end it off like you feel me if you don't know jake now i don't know where you be at but listen man hooper first hooper first Gotta let it be known who prefers. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, Jake, and um, I'll holler at you later. Appreciate you, my guy.